possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. Oh, and there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in hurling, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. Right. It's over the bar. Hello, welcome to the RTE GA podcast. It's finally here in April. Right, there we go. The uh, RTE GA Championship is upon us, as is the GA Championship that's not on RTE. It's all upon us right now. Uh, welcome to Amy Fitzmaurice, Malky Clerkin, and as always, Rory O'Neill. How are you doing, lads? Very good. Hi, hey, Mikey. Um, our promo department, they, they, do, they do a good line in evocative, you know, kind of little bits of TV to get you, to get you thinking about the championship. Eamon, what, if someone says to you, G- uh, Irish Championship Summer, what immediately springs to mind for you? Um, believe it or not, sunshine, uh, Mikey. <laughs> uh, yeah, I look, I think always when we think of the championship, regardless of where you're from, you're thinking of sunny days out, crowds, colour, atmosphere, big games, big build up to games. Oftentimes the game's not living up to their billing. And, uh, you know, then getting to Crow Park, obviously, is, is is where every team and every supporter wants to be. And uh, the same as when you think of the summer days at the start of the championship, you're often, <clears throat> by the time you came to the end of September, it could be dull, it could be dank, you could get any kind of weather. So maybe this year it could be slightly different with that July final. Um, we might have the, one of those scorchers in, in, towards the end of July for an All-Ireland final, which would... Um, be unusual to say the least <laughs> yeah nice the the championship summer will arrive when there's four teams left in the championship uh maliki for you harassed journalist what what springs to mind oh, well, when you think of a championship summer clonus and, chi- clonus and chips <laughs> clonus and chips well you, you see i never needed the championship to go to clonus for chips sorry that was, that was, <laughs> <laughs> that was the only reason to go there um <laughs> Uh, it, it's funny, Mikey, just as you started talking there and you started, you know, dreamily evoking, you know, the glories of summer's past, uh, I, I was starting to feel bad because, like, almost <laughs> the championship now to me just means the next 12 weeks of work. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but I need, to, I need to be better than that. Uh, and, and funny enough, though, what, what, it, what I did start to think about was, um, like, as a kid growing up, all I knew was the Ulster Championship, the Ulster Football Championship, indeed. Like, hurling didn't really exist up where I was from. And um, but one of the real, real high points of doing this job um, is that I've got over the last whatever it is, 10, 15, 20 years, I've got to go around the country and and go to places like I had never really heard of Ennis, you know, like yeah. places like that, or go to Carrick and Shannon to park Sean McDermott or down to Wexford Park. Like Wexford Park on a summer Saturday evening with the wind sort of blowing the trees out the back of the, the stadium there. It's a fantastic place to be. And I think that that, that is the, when I sort of gird myself for, uh, for the next three months of uh, having no days off until, uh, until it all ends. That's what, I can, that's what I love about it. I love getting out. I love getting around the country. And like the GA means so many different things to so many different people in so many different parts of the country. And yet the overarching thing that it means to all of us is more or less the same. It's the sort of, it's the thing that takes us away from from normal life uh, for for a couple of months, uh, and this year, for the first time since I'd say I was a teenager, I get to go on holidays in August. So yeah, very true. <laughs> Rory, what's the championship summer to you? Lots of different things. Uh, like the obviously, as Maliki mentioned, 
heading up to Thurles was a big thing. But funnily enough, the biggest, I suppose, jaunt that we always had and something that we always really looked forward to and really enjoyed was heading down to Killarney. I was in the Scouts as a kid and um, <laughs> we were... We were playing. This is this is a memory that will stay with me for a long, long time. We were we were playing Cork and Kerry. We used to we used to time the weekend to go down there, so that um, the Cork and Kerry Munster final would be on our semi final. But it was mostly Munster finals back then because the teams were obviously seeded. But um, so we'd be beaten again as usual. And we but when we we went we used to go to the game as scouts. And so you went in uniform. And the funny thing about it was the scout troop that I was in which was the seventh Cork but our colours the neckerchief that we used to wear was green and gold it was just it was just it would just happened to be the colours you know and we, right so we we so the match was over we walked back to the town we picked up our bicycles and we were cycling back out to the hostel and we were coming out the road and all the Cork cars were passing and all the Cork cars were full obviously with Cork jerseys and they were all passing us by some beep, some not. And we I noticed this one car and he just slowed down in front of the guy in front of me. I always remember a chap called Christian O'Brien and he was kind of cycling away and the car, and the car stopped and reversed and reversed back. Window, what <laughs> the window popped down. Obviously they saw the green and gold neckerchiefs and they just pushed him off his bike into, the, <laughs> into a ditch. <laughs> we were like, you know, it was the term, what's the term they use friendly fire. Uh, but uh, uh, listen, you know, look, they are the days. I do, I do think, on a more serious note, and look, we won't go there. I do think that I do feel that we're in the midst of a very bad experiment. Um, I think they've kind of dodged a small bit of a bullet this year in terms of scheduling. I, I'm not so sure if this finishing up at the end of July is something that they should persist with and will persist with. I think in terms of this year, because the governing body of soccer decided to play their World Cup in a desert has meant that the World Cup has been shifted to the winter time. Ordinarily, what you're going to have as the GA reaches peak season year in, year out from here on in, if this is something they do persist with, is that the climax of the championships is going to correspond and clash with a major football tournament every second year. Um, no, let's say Ireland or any Euros or hopefully even in, even if we're lucky enough to even qualify for a World Cup or even if you're not in a World Cup the World Cups are, you know a massive beast in terms of promotion and gobbling up media time and attention and focus and schedules and, you know, all of those types of things and I think from a GA's perspective again, I'll say it I just think it's daft Whinging is another thing that's the big yeah, yeah, yeah. The GA yeah. championships over. Yeah. So for me, just for record, it's um, yeah. haggling yeah. with uh, unofficial parking attendants outside Croke Park with my father. It's always it's always a memory that sticks with me. <laughs> um, he would they try to squeeze an extra two euros. They'd be telling him it's inflation, bud, and they'd add, be having none of it. And I'd be expecting us to come back to our car up on blocks. But it was always there. It was just part of the pageantry uh, <laughs> uh, in those streets to the uh, southeast of Croke Park. Uh, always fun. Um, okay, uh, this is the football championship preview, by the way. That's why Eamon Fitzmaurice is here. Obviously, Maliki is more of a hurling man, so you might be a bit Actually, confused. Yeah. That. <laughs> we will have a hurling championship podcast tomorrow with Liam Sheedy. Um, so let's get into it then. Eamon, I'd say for the best part of the last decade, we've sat on preview podcasts and shows and things like this. Desperately clambering for reasons to think why Dublin won't win the championship. Not because we didn't want Dublin to win the championship per se, but just because we wanted we wanted the championship, we wanted the competition, we wanted to believe that there, this was going to be a competitive summer. We have one now, don't we? Like we like we had one last summer, but when maybe we weren't one hundred percent expecting it. We hoped against hope, but this summer, no, it's not wide open. It's not like thirty three counties can win the All Ireland, but you know there is a more open summer to look forward to. A oh, big time, Mikey, and I think that you have. You have the top three, four, five teams, but then as well as that, you have a layer under that of another five, six, seven teams that can beat one of all the top, uh, the top group as well. Whether the the lower down group have enough to beat two or three of the top tier teams to win an All Ireland, you remains mm. to be seen. But definitely, there's huge um, possibility of 
shocks of big wins for teams that maybe we're not expecting and it just brings that bit of unpredictability to us um you you could still end up with uh, you know the likes of Kerry or Dublin coming through one semi-final and then at the other side possibly Mayo Tyrone you don't know but before that there are going to be a lot of talking points it's certainly not going to be the procession that it was once upon a time where Dublin would definitely be there and it was who was going to be joining them. So I think that's only good for, for football anyway. Yeah, Maliki, we say it's more open, but I guess we probably, in reality, we, we're probably looking at maybe four teams, if we're being generous, in, in Dublin, Kerry, Mayo and Tyrone. Are they, are they the genuine contenders for the All-Ireland, in your opinion? I'd say so. I mean, four is plenty, Mikey. Yeah. Oh no, don't yeah, get me wrong. I'm not yeah, complaining yeah, about four, but four. I'm saying they're the four. <laughs> there aren't there aren't four contenders in the Premier League. There aren't four contenders in an awful <laughs> lot of the sports competitions. Four and four is way more than than we as you say than we've been used to. Uh, I think Eamon's point is that is is probably spot on. I think the layer below them, your Donegal's, Armas, Russ Common, Galway, Monaghan. Monaghan. Sorry, I was leaving. I was leaving the the best to last. Um, but they could all, yeah, absolutely, they could all beat one of the others uh, on uh, on their day. Be that in a sort of a quarter final, maybe a semi final. Um, but you're right, like beating two of them would, would be a big ask. But but all the like all the, the all of that top four have flaws as well. That's the thing. That's the reason that it's open. Uh, they they all have question marks. Kerry probably have fewer, we think, but there's question marks still there, there's no doubt about that. Um Mayo, like God. Mayo have injuries. That's their biggest mm. question mark, really. You know, they have they have a, a, a pedigree for lasting lasting the trip much more than 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 quite a few teams, but the injuries looked they, they look to be coming at the wrong time for them. But we'll see how that all works out. And Dublin or Dublin, you know, um, they they're just still not impressive, uh, really, on any level. And so we're not going to know with them, you know. So that's the thing. I think that's what makes it open, uh, and not just that. Like the top four teams are. Like, look, historically, go back over the past decade. They are the four teams that have that have separated themselves from everybody else. Everybody talks now and then about, say, a Donegal or about a Galway or something like that. And they all tend to, they have tended to slither out of the championship when, when the heat really gets up. So these four are the, are the ones who are, you know, forged in the hottest heat, mm. and it'll probably come down to them. But they all have they all have question marks, which makes it interesting. Yeah, R- Rory is, as you know, and uh, some people know, I, I'm a, a Leicester City fan for a very long time, so I'm aware that there can come a season when all the big teams have questions about them, and it's it just happens that you know when the, the the little guy slips through the cracks and manages to win it all. It's it like Connacht managed to win the pro. Uh, Pro, whatever it was, 14, the same year that Leicester won the Premier League. It can happen. Maliki's poo poo in the idea of Galway seem like the obvious case, or if we want to be really exotic and romantic, let's throw Armagh or Derry into the mix there, <laughs> because if they come through Ulster, they could do anything. Um, do, you, do you think there's any chance you can look outside the big four for the All Ireland winners? No. Um, that, there I, you I go. Said, <laughs> no, I, I said it's, it, 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 that they're just. There's too, there's too much of a gap still to bridge, but it's not as wide as it once was. I mean, I think if you hark back to that ill-fated other experiment, which was the Super 8s, and I always remember Colm Cooper Gooch making the point, which was not an unreasonable one, that the problem with the Super 8s was there wasn't, there wasn't eight super teams. There just wasn't. There was one super team and everybody else was trying to play catch-up. I think what you have is a landscape now, funnily enough, if the Super 8 would be great this year. Well, it would be quite it interesting. Would be, uh, it the would be Super very, eights would the Super be eights absolutely would, it, deadly it, this the year. The Super 8 this year would be very, very uh, interesting. You know, the landscape has shifted immeasurably, whereby you have four super teams, and then you have, as Eamon correctly mm-hmm. pointed out, a layer underneath that isn't as far away and as is capable on its day to take out one of these other teams. So I think, look, there was a couple of problems with the Super 8s, as we all know. Um, 
scheduling was obviously one part of it and that the group stage has happened at the back end. And then there was another couple of issues, Dublin with two home games. They had dead rubber problems as well, which they could have fixed. All these were structural issues, which had they had a third year of, an, of its experiment, which they never got to because of COVID. But I do think it was... Um, it was a victim of bad timing in many ways, and it would be a very interesting experiment now, given the landscape currently facing us. That's interesting, Eamon. The, the, the Super 8s were slightly damned by the fact that we were, uh, you know, we were elongating and, shall we say, dragging the arse out of the latter end of a championship where most people kind of knew who was going to win the championship before a ball was thrown in. Do you think the Super 8s, which are coming back in a form next year, do you think now in a more democratic football era, they, they'd actually make sense? Yeah, look, I think the lads have it nailed there. I, from a completely selfish perspective, I was actually a fan of the Super 8s. I was in charge the first year they were there. No, we came mm. unstuck in them. But um, <clears throat> I was, uh, from a completely selfish point of view, from Kerry's perspective, coming through Munster Championship, uh, generally being slightly undercooked when you got to the serious stuff, I figured that getting at least two if not three serious games in the Super 8s you were going to be if you got to an All-Ireland semi-final it was on merit and you were going to be there and you were going to be ready if you didn't get there you weren't good enough and you might as well be out anyway so um, I, you know from that point of view I was I was a fan of them at the time I saw the flaws I remember the first year we played you, the, the provincial champions played each other in the first game. That was changed the second year. Some of the kinks were ironed out. I think they would have ironed out some some more of the kinks in the third year that if they got the two winners to play the two against Correct. each other in the second game. That was a game, big thing. Yeah, yeah, you, you would have got rid of the, the dead rubber from the last game. And I think it could have become very good. Uh, but like he said, when Dublin were out on their own, Dublin always won their first two games. They could afford to put out their B team in the third game. They were going into the All Ireland semi final. Perfect. They, you know, they were they were ready to go from there. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's it's it'll be interesting this year, I suppose. The different the different format, but the fact that the qualifiers are back, you know, gives teams a second chance. I mean, after the first you know week or two of the championship, you're going to have either Galway or Mayo, and either Armagh or Nigal inside mm. in those inside in those qualifiers. So straight away they get interesting. And then as well as that, then obviously you're going to have the Talton Cup, which hopefully will be properly embraced by everyone, especially the, you know, the, the participating teams that they, they, they place value in it. Because I think if they do, and if we all place value in it, I think it can be a brilliant competition. Um, you know, it can be like uh, the, the way that we hark on about the league and how good it is because you have teams playing even standard the whole time. It can be similar to that. And, and hopefully that's the way that it'll pan out for the summer and it, it gets a foothold in our in our imaginations and in the, and the players that are playing in it, that it gets a foothold in terms of their ambitions. And I think if that happens, it can be a brilliant competition. Yeah. Maliki, um, God bless all the journalists who have kind of done the kind of how this championship works. I know it's in Rory's head, but he needs to keep it there because if he tries to explain it, he'll forget how to tie his shoelaces and he needs to know this for how the championship runs. But Colm, Colm Keynes did it in the Indo and mother of God, like, you think it's gone back to being straightforward, but obviously it's not because they're not kicking teams out of the Sam Maguire this year if a third or fourth te place team, third or fourth division team make a provincial final. So... They're making allowances for preliminary qualifiers. Yeah. You know, there could be a third round of qualifiers. Conkeys, these are the teams that could end up in the first round qualifiers if going on their league position or previous meetings, he's kind of gone. These are the list of teams. Galway, Armagh, Limerick, Derry, Louth, Cork, Meath, Monaghan. They're the teams who could end up in the first round of qualifiers. Mm. The, the Talshan Cup is obviously, we've we've discussed it before with you on the podcast, Malachi. It's an unknown quantity. We'll have to wait and see what it is. But the one... The one immediate result of the Challenging Cup is the qualifiers are a bear pit from day one. Yeah, that's a, that, that, that's it. And like, I'm even loath to talk about the the, the Talton Cup in those terms because, like, yeah. even even by putting it that way, you're sort of saying, oh, "Well, essentially, we're getting the dead wood out of the qualifiers." Yeah, the only good is, of the Challenging Cup is it makes something yeah, else better. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and yeah. like. That that sort of narrative is, is what is going to kill the Talton Cup. Yeah. Is us talking about it as if, well, the great thing about it is that it takes the riffraff away, and like that, the, you know, that 
we're, there's go, it's going to have enough trouble getting off the ground like without us doing that. But look, there's no point in, in ignoring the fact that that look that is an offshoot of it. Like the the when when uh, and and like this has happened to plenty of Ulster teams. Plenty of Ulster teams have got great runs through the qualifiers playing Division Four teams. Uh, like Monaghan did it the year Monaghan got to the All Ireland semi final. Like I think they beat they beat Wexford and Waterford along the way. Um, and I. And I think we're losing to one of the we're losing to one of them with about ten minutes to go in one game. Uh, but like they, that's you know that's what they're plenty of that it it has been a, a handy run for a lot of teams, and that's not going to be there anymore. You know you've got to, you're going to have to earn it. And look, that's what a championship should be like. You should be to the pin of your collar in every match or as many matches as possible. Certainly as the thing goes on. Like, you know, that, that was the one sort of flaw of the, of the qualifier system, which I always had, have had great time for. I know it's sort of unfashionable, but I, I always thought it was a fantastic innovation. But, you know, especially for the odd Ulster team or if a, a Galway or a Mayo had met each other in the first round, you know, they would build up to this savage match, this absolute pitch battle. Uh, and then, it would, you know, they'd have three weeks off and have a Division Four team. And like your championship should build, like a, comp- a sporting competition should build. The the road should get a bit steeper with it with each climb. And this is like this does that, you know. Yeah. One the one concern the one concern, Mikey, in relation to the Talchin Cup, and again interested in all views, is the GPA expenses row is rumbling on. Now that's an internal matter for the GA, and you know, look, good luck to them on that front. But I have seen mooted the potential for advice nearly to be given to players if this expenses row isn't resolved for when certainly the teams at the lower end, as soon as they're knocked out to just go to America. Now, if that does happen and if this expenses row drags on and isn't resolved and a lot of the Sligos and uh, Cavins and Tipperary's, if they end up exiting the championship early and all their best players pack their bags and head for New York and Boston, then you are definitely into, you know, competition farce territory. Yeah. What about that, Amy? Because um, if if there's a preliminary round for the Sam McGuire and Chalchon Cup, you're looking at the first teams going out of championship on the 21st and 22nd of May. Otherwise, it'll be the the next two weekends if there's no preliminary rounds. Um, that's very early. Obviously, that that's going back to the days of the uh, the very early, you know, the days of the straight knockout championship. And uh, I'd say if you were to go to Balls Bridge on the Monday and Tuesday after those those Pretty weekends, cute. you'd see uh, a very athletic athletic looking <laughs> queue at the U.S. Embassy. <laughs> <laughs> so, R- Rory, I don't I don't think Rory's point is lost on anybody, really, is it? No, but you you'd be hoping, <clears throat> I suppose, you'd be hoping for some big picture thinking as well from from the players within squads as well, that, you know, if you're looking to build something and, uh, you know, a lot of those teams are, they have good management teams in place now and they're trying to build from the lower divisions up. And if you're trying to build something, part of building something is if you exit the main championship or the Sam Maguire championship, that if you're going into the Talton Cup, you're trying to get as far as you can in that toe in it, but also you're developing your team, you're developing your group, you're playing matches and in, in, at the best time of year, best pitches with the best profile. Hopefully that the Talton Cup will have that profile. I know the first game is on the weekend of all of the provincial finals. And I think, I don't know, it's the Rugby European Cup final on and the Soccer European Cup yeah. finals. And there's it a is, load on correct. that weekend. Yeah. So it, it might be a challenge that weekend, but as it goes on, that it just gets the profile. But I'd be hoping if I was in charge of one of those teams uh, or if I was a player in one of those teams, I'd want buy-in from the whole group that we stay at it for as long as we can. I know there is the temptation to go to America and of course that's fantastic experience as well. But if you're looking at developing a group over a couple of years, part of that is doing well in the Talton Cup. And like to me, it's no different that when I was playing club football in Kerry, I played with Fenwick, small rural club. We played... Uh, we started off at Novice, which would be Junior B. We ended up a senior club. We went up through the ranks. We played. We played in those competitions. We won the Junior. We won a Junior All Ireland. That was absolutely incredible for us. I put that up there with any of the intercounty achievements. We had a fantastic time, fantastic run with us. I wasn't 
winning games at Fenwick and saying, I oh, wouldn't it be great if we were beating Dr. Croaks? We were never going to beat Dr. Croaks. They were in a different league to us. But we were playing teams at our own level in Kerry. And then when we went on to Munster and All-Ireland level, the same. So I think the Talton Cup is the same. If you're winning something as a group that you're buying into, I, I, I think it can only be good. And then next year, you're taking the step on, you're in the Sam Maguire competition. Okay, lads, what can we do here now? So I, I'd be hopeful, Mikey, that that would be the attitude towards it. But of course, there's the risk that a significant number of players will will head stateside for, for that experience yeah. as well. Yeah, well, that, that you're hoping people adopt an attitude. And, and the thing with Fanoog and Kerry was that the novice championships through junior A, intermediate senior, that's the way it has always been. And Maliki, as we know, Leitrim have a God-given right to compete for Sam Maguire. They always have had it. The issue is taking that away from them rather than, uh, and it's very easy for us. And I, I'd say, I'd say I'd be quite happy if Wexford were playing in a junior All Ireland Championship at the moment because that's clearly the level they're at. They're one of the thir- three worst teams in the country. No, you know, that's just the, the, the league table doesn't lie. But I'm not involved in the Wexford football team. Um, they will feel very, they might feel very, very differently about it. It's very difficult to impose new structures on people when the structures that have been there forever have been there forever, even if they don't suit. 70 percent of the teams yeah but i guess you have to try like you have to you may as well they, they, look they, this hasn't been sprung on anybody this has been in the ether for a long time um it is something that john horan you know laid out laid his line on or laid out laid down a marker and said look we're going to create a secondary competition we're going to try and do it right the proof of the pudding will be you know over the next couple of months we'll see um so not everybody uh, can be expected to go full bore for it, but uh, I've talked to a few managers and they're all, you know, they generally were essentially, I was talking to them during the league and they were all kind of going, well, look, we obviously don't want to be in that competition. We want to get promotion out of Division 3. Um, but now that they're there, you know, they, it, there's, there's no reason for them not to have a go at it. Yeah. Um, uh, I, the, I think the, the only reason is if like you, you don't want to be playing in something where you're attracting derision that's the one thing like you yeah. don't want to be they don't, like if you're I say an awfully footballer you don't want to be walking down the street in Tullamore and somebody stop you and sneer at you for, for trying your hardest to win the Talton Cup like that, that's the if that becomes the sort of overarching theme of the thing that, sure, that's what killed the Tommy Murphy Cup. You know, yeah. it was just that that people kind of went to Irish, what are you at doing that? How yeah. carry on? And, you know, have you have you nothing better to be at? Kind of thing. And look, the, at that level, like this is a delicate thing. You know, you you, you know, we we see intercounty footballers and look at them and say that they're you know they're putting their lives on hold for this kind of stuff. It has to be attractive. It can't be you can't be putting your life on hold for something that people are going to laugh at you. For. Yeah. And so that's like, I think that's why it's so important that, especially in the media, that we talk about it as a properly going concern and not even, as I was saying earlier, not as something that is of benefit to the bigger yeah. competition, because yeah. that's, that's a real killer for it. Like that's, that's like it. And people make the comparison with the Christie ring and the Joe McDonough and all that in hurling, but it's not quite the same no. because the counties that are in the Christie ring and the Laurie Mara and all that, are essentially football counties that have a few, you know, lifer hurlers. That, they they that see are, themselves that, as developing. They don't see themselves as fully exactly, formed. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas, you know, you can't tell people in Cavan that football isn't part of their culture. You know, like winning Sam Maguire's, even though it's decades upon decades upon down, decades ago. Down or in, down or in. There, down. No. All these counties that have a, a proper football culture. Hmm. Um, they need to be able to see the Talton Cup as part of that football culture rather than a sort of booby prize academic exercise that is just getting them out of the way so that the people can concentrate on the main thing. I think that's a very fair point but look nobody has qualified for the Talton Cup yet because we have the provincial championships to play. That's true they can all win the All-Ireland. Yeah 
Let's get down to the nitty gritty, Rory, and let's start with the nittiest and the grittiest the Ulster Championship, which oh, yes. isn't it great that the, the All-Ireland Championship, because of this condensed season, we're actually, you know, we're, we're, we're throwing in with the All-Ireland Champions here. Champions here. The All-Ireland Championship is not starting uh, in New York on the other side of the Atlantic with a game, which I know it's on the RT player this year, but usually it's not seen by anybody. The, the football championship is actually starting with the All-Ireland Champions in the preliminary round at Ulster, and they are playing Fermanagh beat for Mana and they go on to play Derry. Whoever wins that game will play the winners of Down and Monaghan. Mm-hmm. And at the moment, from what you're hearing coming out, the Down doesn't seem to be the happiest camp in the world. So we might give Maliki, Maliki's team the nod there. So um, it's a pig of a draw, Rory, for it's the all Ireland Champions. I was, I was only looking at it there last night. It's really, really tough for Tyrone. Like, Okay, Fermanagh are a Division Three team, but Fermanagh are a good championship side, you know? Like, the, you, look, Tyrone will probably win the game, but they'll get their fill of it. It'll be a game where they'll be sore on Monday morning. They might pick up an injury or two, you know, and they've got to do that times, times three just to make it to the Ulster final. <laughs> you know, that's, that is a tough ask now. And, you know, like, then you're facing into Derry, who we know, as, as, as you mentioned, are, you know, we're possibly unlucky not to be another Division 1 team on the back of a very good league campaign before they run into Monaghan probably like given you know look the reality is Monaghan would see themselves maybe a bit ahead of down at the minute so it's really tough that's why when I was kind of looking at potential winners for the Ulster Championship I think like had Armagh not picked up all the suspensions that they picked up I think it would have been a fantastic opportunity for them given the side of the draw that they're on and obviously, look, Donegal is the big one for them. I think they would have been presented with a really good chance to make it to an Ulster final, maybe all in one piece. I think the problem is those suspensions have probably shifted uh, the balance of how to call that game ever so slightly against them. Um, now, I know, Re- is Rian O'Neill being cleared to yeah. play? Yeah, he's yeah, going to yeah, play, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so look, that's that's huge. So, look, I think, I think Toronto will have it all to do to come out of Ulster again. It's incredibly hard championship to win. It's incredibly hard championship to win back to back. Their safety net is obviously there this time around, you know, which will which will mm. obviously help the Division One teams. But it's as tough it's as tough a route for the All Ireland champions as they could have possibly uh, as they could have possibly not wanted. Yeah, Eamon, you below down in uh, down in Munster must have often smiled when you looked at the fixture list in the Ulster Championship and said, <laughs> "There, but for the grace of God, go us." <laughs> yeah, no, you see the thing about it, Mikey. What I would say about the Ulster Ch- Championship, it's it is a minefield to come through it, but if you come through it, you're ready for the big stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. You know that's that's the beauty about it. Like this, you're 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 going to be so conditioned to match combat. Rather than you know, at, at times yeah. the monster, like the uh, monster and Leinster, at times, of course you're going into your games, you're treating them like we always treated every game uh, the same in terms of the respect for the opposition and everything. But you're not going to get the same testing physically or football wise at times in Munster as you would nearly every game out. Like that that, that route that you outlined for Tyrone, if they keep winning, to beat for Man the first day out, to beat Derry the second day out. Uh, then to be probably Monaghan, um, you know, and that's just to get to the final. So if you if you do that, you've really earned your place yeah. in the, the Ulster Championship. So I think at times you'd be looking at them maybe taking scalps out of each other and you'd be saying, Dad, that's not us. But I think if you stand back and look for us, if you want to win the All-Ireland, it's probably the best province to be in from the point of view of getting ready for that assault later on in the year. Yeah. Uh, Malik, you were, you were reared on it. Um, yeah. m- mother, mother's milk to you. Um, do you see it? Do you see it that way that it's come out of it and it's character forming? But um, if you say if you're say if you're Tyrone and you make it to the semi final and you lose by a point to um, Gaelic football's cockroaches Monaghan, do you then like it? It it can be hard to get yourself up there. It's great if you get through, but if you don't get through it, it can be you know it could be kind of uh, damaging as well. Well, no, hardly are bucks than Tyrone uh, to get themselves up for, <laughs> for, for the next step after. Um, I think this year as well, there's one sort of added element as well in that um, those that path that you've laid out for Tyrone there, I'm pretty sure all takes place within a month. 
yeah. you know, they play for Man on the 16th of April and their quarter, their semi final will be on the 15th, 15th of May. 15th of May, yeah. You know, so like that's that's two weeks off then for the final. <laughs> you know, you know. So yeah, look, look. Uh, I I must say it has. Um, every time the Ulster draw is made, I always look uh, for which side is the handier side, um, because there's usually sort of four or five mm. teams uh, that can win it, and at least three of them are going to be on one side of the draw, and I look at the other side, and so I always kind of. I, to me, Donegal or Armagh will will probably win Ulster. Uh, I, I think it's an awful lot for for the teams on the other. But like the other side will mm. sort of take each other out of it. And despite this being Ulster, you're not just running the risk of picking up injuries. You're running the risk of t- <laughs> picking up suspensions, which all all, all also. Well, you could say Donegal or Armagh in the league was or, the preliminary round of the Ulster <laughs> Championship exactly, this year. Yeah. Are you are you are you might get a boat of COVID? Oh, we, won't indeed, we, won't, we won't go there. We won't go there. But but, uh, but the rest of the country is very accommodating to that. Not anymore, Maliki. Lesson learned. Uh, Lesson yeah, learned. yeah. You can live with your COVID now. All right, lads. Let's let's call it, Rory. Uh, sorry, Maliki. You're saying Donny Gallagher and Armagh. If you had to put a five on it now, yeah, who would you I, go I for? Think, I think Armagh. I I I know what you're saying about the suspensions, but. Um, I fancy that I would especially Ray, Ray and O'Neill being allowed, being back for it. Uh, I would I would go with them, and I I think they'll win. I think they'll win also. Rory, yeah, I, I agree. I think it's Armagh's time. I think look, they haven't really won a whole a whole a whole pile since Karen McGinley took charge. She's there. I don't know. Is it seven years now? Maybe a bit longer. Don't bit know. Longer, uh, seven as manager. They, they have a bad record in Ulster. That has. To be yeah, they, they like you know. I was looking. Yeah, and so. I think it's their time. I think they need to win this. They need to put something on the board just to kind of establish themselves as a proper force. And I think the only way they're going to do that is by going out and win the Ulster Championship. I think it's a great mark for all teams in Ulster. It kind of really says, look, we're here now and we're good to go. And I think, yeah, I give, I just give our mark. Because I think, look, as Balki said, if they can get over Donegal, I think they have a handy, handy or side yeah. of the draw to make it to a final. And I'd fancy them to, to, to win Ulster. Eamon, are you going to make it a hat trick for Armagh or are you going oh, yeah. elsewhere? For, for such an unpredictable championship that we're talking about, we're all going the same way. So, I, I, yeah, for, for the same reasons. And I think they have to, I think they just have to, at this stage, Kier McGinney will feel that they're at the point where they have to get silverware on the board um, because the, the development has been pretty consistent, but they're at a point now where they need silverware on, the, on that table. So, yeah, going for Armagh as well. Okay, well, I, I, I've I've been a Derry fanboy since the start of the season, and I'm not going to let a minor blip like losing to your two closest rivals in Division Two <laughs> <laughs> knock me off there. So I'm going to stick. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to say Derry. Interesting, Derry. Well. Right. Yeah, yeah. I like to be contrary, Maliki, because no one remembers if you back if you back the obvious team. But if like with Loud getting <laughs> like I'm going to be mentioning Loud getting uh, promoted from Division Three for the rest of the year because it makes me look clever and I can just ignore it all the times I'm wrong, which is every time other than Loud. Um, <laughs> so let's move on to Connacht because the next most immediately interesting game in the football championship, I suppose, is, is Mayo and Galway next weekend in the quarterfinals. Uh, the other two quarterfinals are taking place this weekend at New York, Sligo, London and Leitrim. Um, I suppose, first off, Maliki, we know very little about New York. I haven't seen any of any coverage of mm. them yet. It's because the what? champion... What? You, you missed, missed, you missed my piece in the Irish Mikey. Times last Saturday, Mikey. Oh On New York, God. I did. Sorry, I was... Um, <laughs> I you walked into that one, Mikey. Sorry. You're not looking so clever now. Your dairy prediction ain't going to save you on that one, Mikey. <laughs> no, I am. Um... My wife was away. I I didn't have time to scratch myself. Never mind read the paper of record on Saturday. Excuses, Thank you very much, Maliki. Maliki very... doesn't did, did, much. Did you have to go on a recce for that? particular piece man no yeah i did yeah the expenses <laughs> the, the expenses barely get me down to uh, walsh park this weekend or never mind over to new york yeah. um, oh, g- give us the cliff notes there then maliki the can, notes, can new york do, do shock us all no not there isn't they haven't a hope and and in fairness they sort of say that themselves um this is they're the last they're the last squaring of the covid circle every other ga team on the planet has had a game in the last two years this is their first game in three years yeah. because they missed the two and like London get London have been able to London have played 12 games, 12 league games since the pandemic 
came down. Like New York literally haven't played a game since 2019. They're uh, like they have an enormous turnover. I they played a challenge match against Salt Hill Knock Nakara there a couple of weeks ago. Um, and they had four survivors from their 2019 team out of they played 35 players and four of them had had played for New York before so no they haven't a hope really they've Johnny Glenn is playing for them is playing sort of full forward and Adrian Varley the former Galway player is there as well but I think interestingly I think seven of the of the starting team are going to be American born um they, they like that have come through their their sort of academies mm-hmm. and their underage structures over there but uh, no, they're just good. They're going to be delighted to to have a game at Gaelic Park. Actually, I was talking to the chairwoman Joan Henshey, who's an amazing woman. Mm. Who was had her on the podcast was, before? She's great. Who was who was laughing? They've been trying to redevelop uh, Gaelic Park for I think five years. I think Larry McCarthy like it put made the initial attempt to you know put plans in place, and the construction company rang her three weeks ago and said, "Right, Joan, let's let's go." And she said, "Fine, come on. We'd look. We have a game in a few weeks, but you can do it. You like? I'm not saying no. So <laughs> there, 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 so there is actually construction going on around Gaelic Park and all that. Look, they're going to be. It's it's an achievement to be there. They are good. Their Sligo will beat them, and that's fine. But they will. Um, they'll they'll just be delighted to get going again because yeah. you know it was a, it's a big thing they're, for them to lose. You know, they're in the Talchin Cup." They come yes, in, uh, which, I'm delighted which quite, about that. Which, which is quite quarter final stage. It's quite, it's quite yeah. interesting. They get a boy straight to the quarter final. I'm mm. just wondering how you know. Had they is that home in, or away? Had they had they anybody in high away. office that away. might have been able to? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Look, they are absolutely delighted to be in the Talton Cup. Like they can't wait for it because this will be their first. They're coming to Ireland for that in Ireland. They're coming yeah. to Ireland. So yeah. they'll yeah. they'll come to Ireland for yeah. the the uh, for the quarter final stage, and look whoever gets them will beat them and will be delighted to, to get them and host them and give them a, it's a, like getting a Qatar as your tier that, one team in your world cup thing. group yeah exactly yeah <laughs> but yes no they're in it and, and are and are mad for it as are London London are absolutely mad for playing in the cup yeah well London uh Eamon you'd have to think you know they're not writing their chances off against Leitrim whatsoever after the league campaign they had no, oh, I think, and it's on over in London, is it, Mikey? Yep, mm-hmm. yep. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. So that's that's always going to be a slippery, uh, a slippery challenge for Leitrim. Even just the logistics of getting over there, and you know, it's just it's a bit different to an away game in Ireland. So um, yeah, that'll be that'll be a big a big test of them. Um, obviously, though, they're going to come up against either Galway or Mayo in the semi final mm. if they did happen to do a number in Leitrim. So. You'd still fancy that they will end up in the in the Talton Cup regardless, but um, yeah, that's going to be an interesting game. That first game out against against Leitrim over in Ryslip. Yeah, well, the burning question, as always in Connachtory, is will Galway beat Mayo? Well, yeah, it's 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 the it's the first Sunday game live football outing for us as well um, on week two on April twenty fourth. So one to really look forward to. We're going to be in Castlebar for a massive crowd, I'd expect. Um, um, wouldn't be surprised if it's close to full house. I, New pitch, like the uh, may, like y- 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 how much can we read into what happened to May on the league final? I don't know. I mean, a lot of people are saying now, oh, did they pull? Did they do a pull? Did they maybe train through? And you know, obviously, they didn't play their strongest team, they've got some injuries. And then you say, yeah, and everything is favouring Galway, but they didn't exactly pull up trees in their final against Roscommon either. And so it's very difficult to kind of read too much into it. I think in terms of the overall league campaign, Galway were certainly the more impressive. But then again, playing at a lower level, I'd probably see it very much as 50-50. If you were to favour one team, you'd just know, just don't back against Mayo. They're at home for whatever that's for whatever that's worth. And I think when... Mayo are, you know, when people are starting to doubt them, it's exactly the time they pull out a performance. I just think they're just that bit more seasoned as well. And you'd probably give them the nod, but that's not exactly fantastic insight, given the fact that, look, they'll be favourites going into it either. Yeah. Um, the injuries are big. You mentioned them already, Maliki, like Oshin Mullen, Paddy Dirk and Dermot O'Connor and Killian O'Connor is back, but, you know, can't be match fit yet that's yeah. like they have an that's, issue with Brendan Harrison there's an issue with Owen McLaughlin like that's yeah. just, I think like they're not any jo- old has, players has, Jor- has Jordan Flynn picked up a knock now as well there's did something I hear? there as well yeah. alright so so the latest news on that was that Jordan Flynn and Brendan Harrison are definitely going to miss it 
Uh, Paddy Durkin and Dermot O'Connor haven't trained since the league final, but will hopefully the week of the of the Galway game. So they'll hopefully be back training next week. Uh, Killian O'Connor is obviously training on, and I don't think there's any real worry over Rasheen Mullen. No. I think he, I think he's, and uh, our own McLaughlin for that matter. Uh, I think they'll all play. Um, Jordan Henley Henley a lot like. Is, huh? is, is Robbie Henley all right, or what's what's his story? I, I haven't heard about Robbie. Yeah, um, but um, like he's it, it, it is, isn't it amazing? You know how he's become so central to them, and and like will be seen as such an enormous loss if, if he doesn't make it. But I, I actually haven't heard anything on that score. But I think they're like I know what you say, Rory, about Galway not really pulling up any trees in in that final. But like, God, I thought that was a great game. No, it was very and, good, yeah. but it was and, nice. It was a nice game of football, it, though. No, man. I know what like, you mean. I know what you mean. There was yeah, no spite yeah. in it at all, you know. No, I understand that, but like games take on a life of their own, and for what that game was, Galway were right in it. And look, a, a, a last minute goal, you know, killed them. And Ross Common aren't Ross Common are a proper team, you know, like they're 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 in that realm of teams that could catch a big team on their day. Um, so. Like, I know what you're saying. I know that they've been at a lower level and you don't back against Mayo when their backs are against the wall. Um, and I probably would go go for Mayo, but like, uh, Galway are... Galway, I think we all think Galway should be better. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think I think one of these days they might just show us that they are a bit better. Um, and maybe this will be it. I don't know. Um, how do you see it, Eamon? Um, I, I would say that Mayo are probably, in, in my expert opinion, Mayo are, are probably a, a more complete, complete team, but I think Galway, in three or four positions, have guys who can potentially win a game almost on their own. Yeah, I, I, yeah I'm with the lads. I think it's very hard to call it, to be honest, uh, Mikey. Look, if, if Mayo have all of their big guns back, um, you'd favour Mayo then, just from the, the, the point of view of the strength of their squad and the subs that will be coming in and everything else. But... <clears throat> If those lads are only training, if the likes of Dermot O'Connor is only resuming training kind of a week out from the game, Killian O'Connor, we saw it in the league final, he obviously has a bit of match fitness to get up to. Um, Oshin Mullen, possibly not as much. You, you know, if they could be kind of undercooked. A lot of their mm. better players could be kind of undercooked. Um I think Galway will be disappointed with the way the league finished losing the last two two games after having such a positive league up to that point. Um, they're leaking a bit at the back. Like it all kind of points uh, uh, a seasoned Mayo doing 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 yeah. business at the <laughs> yeah, end. Yeah, it does but, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, I don't know. I, uh, yeah, it really is a very 50-50 one. Okay. Um, Rory, do the winners of this match win Connacht or have Ross Common got a real shot? No, I think Ross Common have a brilliant chance. Brilliant chance. I'm actually going to go for Ross Common to win Connacht. I think they'll just they Ross Common are gas. They're gas, right? They're a gas bunch. Like they just there's a resilience about them. I think they're playing a bit more expansive this year. They had kind of gone back a little bit into sort of defensive football, which I don't think necessarily suits them. I don't think they needed to play that way because they're very aggressive. They're very physical. I think they'll obviously come through on the other side of the draw and they will be in the Connacht final. There's no doubt about that. I think they've improved again this year. There's loads of elements to their play that would be give would give them encouragement that they can beat anybody on a given day. And they've won um, more uh, won more Connacht titles than Galway since 2010. You know, yeah, and this is the kind of year <laughs> where you kind of get the sense like this might be the year that they could go and do it as well, you know. Yeah. Now, um, so like I think, yeah, I, I think they I to my mind, it's going they're going to be in the final. I think they'll have an easier run into it. I think that'll allow them to put in a good body of work in terms of training. I think they have a fantastic manager who's you know no a no-nonsense type fella. They play with say a team is a representative of the manager's character Ross Common are exactly that and I'm going to go for them to win Connacht isn't it funny the way the qualifiers change the way we think about these things like if this was straight knockout like it has been for the last two years I think all of us would be going ah look may will may will find a way to do it <laughs> but because there's a bit of a safety net for whoever w- loses the Galway Mayo match you kind of go ah, yeah no, and no, i also mean yeah. <laughs> you know but also mal i've also seen it mentioned oh you know you need to be going through the front door i don't think you do 
I think, like I saw somebody saying, oh, Mayo, if they're going to get back to Croke Park or to All-Irelands, they need to go through the front door. It's not that arduous a task. Uh, history, I mean, it's, history it's, is it's no an, judge on that, Matt. <laughs> yeah, but it's, yeah. An extra, it's an extra two games. Like, it's... Yeah. Yeah. Um, where do you see it going, Eamon? Um, uh, I'm, with, I'm with Rory again. I was laughing when he said Roscommon. I said I'd probably be my own now with Roscommon, mm-hmm. but I just think, again, that the Mayo-Galway game, they could take a lot out of those teams. Other, yeah. There could be the injuries, there could be the suspension thing coming out of that. Um, I think Roscommon are going well. Uh, Harney, Alton Harney and uh, Eddie Nolan playing midfield for them and freeing up and Smith to be a bit further forward, I think has given them great punch going the other way as well. So, yeah, I give Roscommon a great chance, but again, wouldn't be surprised if Mayo won it. Wouldn't be surprised if Galway won it. But I do give Roscommon. I, I'm going to go for Roscommon to win Connacht. It's going to be an excellent championship, Connacht. Like, really yeah, will be a good championship. Maliki, I take it. You, you, do, do you think Mayo will um, uh, will confound you and the qualifier theory, or do you also think it could be Roscommon? No, I th- I I'll go with Mayo because um, apart from anything else, if they look, they know how to get around Galway. Like those games are there's never a whole pile in them, but. I, I, I think they look. They've been in the last two All Ireland finals. Like there's, you know, all, all the even all these young players that we talk about, all have two All Ireland finals played. You know, they they have so much experience of of getting through these games. I think they get through that, and then they have a a month with a game against Leitrim uh, in between that and a Connacht final. So all those injuries ought to start rounding into shape by the time the Connacht final comes around. So, yeah, I'll go with Mayo. Okay. I'm going with Galway because I just think Paul Conroy is brilliant and he's going to he's gonna beat everybody on his own if he needs to. No, not quite that, but I just do think they have some wonderful players. I don't think Mayo... I think Maliki's point about the qualifiers in Mayo is a fair point that they may... Not that they, they, they won't go hammer and tongs for it, but at the same time... I, I just do think that there's something about this Galway team and I think third time's a charm then against, against Roscommon because the first two games don't really count. Um, so that's where we are. Right, we'll move on um, to Leinster. The big ones. The big ones, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, we have two months. Okay, let's start with Munster. How much are you looking forward to watching David Clifford playing in the Munster Championship, Eamon? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, looking... Look, of course we're looking forward to the Munster Championship um, look obviously Kerry are in a, a good place after the league but I think the, the question mark that they'll have themselves and that we all have is that they've been in this exact same position the last two years and it hasn't It ha- at the end of the league they've been quite happy with where they were at um, you know but it hasn't panned out further down the line so uh, there is a different feel about Kerry this year I think I don't know, is it a challenge or is it a benefit to them with, with the tight scheduling that's going on all around the place? Unusually for Kerry, um, they have five weeks from the league semi or league final to the Cork game. After that, they have another three weeks to Munster final if they get there. If they win that, they have four more weeks to the quarter final, which in such a condensed year seems very unusual. I'm not mm-hmm. sure if it's a, if it's a benefit to them or if it's um, something that could harm their chances, particularly the four weeks in all, at an all Ireland quarter final, if you get there, it's a long enough gap to fill. There's mm. no club activity. There's a lot going on, you know? So um, so you're better off getting bet by Cork in the semi final. <laughs> <game, isn't you? laughs> possibly, Rory. Possibly. But uh, we w- yeah, that's that's not in the carry man's DNA to, no, uh, to, no, to, to give that up. So, um, uh, yeah, look, I mean, Kerry are in a good place, but. I think the questions that need to be answered will be further down the line. Yeah, Maliki, if the if the qualifiers kind of take a bit of pressure off, off the likes of Mayo, um, in some ways, does did the pressure harm Kerry? I know, like it's easy to look back on it now and say, geez, they lost to to Cork, like last minute goal, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, in twenty twenty, but it like it was a do or die game which maybe they kind of got out of the habit of in Munster, whereas now they're not quite do or die and they can relax and they can be carry. Um, can the qualifiers mean different things to different big guns in different provinces? I don't know, Mikey. I, I was there in Parky Creek that night. I don't think they properly realised it was a do or die game until <laughs> uh, they were picking Mark Keane's ball out of the net <laughs> and because they were they were very sloppy all through that when he came. Um, I don't think the, the lack of the qualifiers had anything really to do with it. I, I, I think that that 
I think they'll they'll sometimes exhume that video in years to come and go, how in the name of Jesus did we lose? That <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. Uh, I don't know. Eamon makes a very very salient point there. I think that we're all going to be talking about in early June. Um, that four weeks is is going to be a real test for them to work out how to how to manage that, manage it. especially because you know they could get a real a really nutty draw in the in the quarterfinal. Uh, you know the like as we say um, the that that layer of teams below the top four makes like the last eight the quarterfinal lineup this year, unless, you know, some teams take each other out, which can always happen, obviously. Um, but the last eight should be a really, like, that's a real test for them. Mm. Um, that quarterfinal should be this year. And they'll be coming into it having no momentum, having presumably won the Monster final by 10 points or whatever against, let's say, Clare or, or, or Limerick or whoever. And um, that's, you know, that's such a, now, look, they're well warned. They, you know, they can read a map the same as the rest, or a calendar the same as the rest of us. They know what's coming, and they'll obviously have have done their their work. But like Eamon will know this far better than me. You can do make all do all the planning you like. You don't know until ten minutes into a game whether that planning has has paid off. You don't know. You can't really know until the ball is thrown in and the crowd starts roaring and the sun is beaten down and the ref gives a few against you. And right, here we are, lads. We've done all this planning. What what good has it been to us? So I think the Monster Championship, look, we can be dismissive or we can say whatever we like about it. We all presume that Kerry will win it. We presume they'll win it with a, with a fair bit in hand. They will hopefully not. They will hope not to pick up too many injuries. But that quarterfinal is a is a is a real circle on the calendar date because mm. um, you would you would expect them with a bit of momentum to to like they're they're probably the best team as as long as they can overcome that quarterfinal. Mm. I, I think they have a, a great shot. Obviously, yeah, yeah. Kerry, 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 Kerry will win Munster. They're just too far ahead of everybody else. The one, the one prediction that I would make in terms of Munster, which I think might be quite interesting in the overall context. Again, when we talk about Talchin Cup, is um, I was very impressed with Tipperary in the league final against Cavan. Yeah. I know league finals can be, you know, strange. But I thought they, I thought they played really good. I thought they were the better team. And I thought the Division Four final was a better, was a higher standard than the Division Three final. Mm. And I would not be surprised to see Tipperary in the Munster final. And obviously, then, David Power has done some job there. Yeah, like, yeah. Especially you know, like it's those... a new, they're, they're a new team. Oh, I could totally eat, new team. Yeah, yeah. I could see Tipperary coming through the other side of that draw and making it to a Munster final. Obviously, they won't be good enough to beat Kerry, but you know, it's your first Halchin Cup uh, absentee, so to speak. Yeah, <laughs> to stay out of it. Yeah. yeah, it's it's an interesting point you raised about the Ireland quarter final, and it is one thing now. Not everybody's totally sold on proposal green or whatever it was called, the twenty twenty three football championship. But it does do away with the fact that in a three month championship, basically for one month of it, the best team, like what the favorite for the All Ireland, won't play a match, which mm. is which is kind of bonkers, really, when you think about it. Mm. Um, okay, finally, Leinster, Eamon do we do we have a Leinster championship this year, or are we deluding ourselves? Or can Kildare, or Meath, or Wexford genuinely put? <laughs> <laughs> genuinely, I was put, wondering what your third one. <laughs> get, is, is there a genuine challenger to Dublin, Eamon? And, and like, what do you think of the Dublin conundrum? Because obviously, they didn't play well in the league. Um, they uh, been relegated to Division Two. Um, you know, a lot's going wrong. Key players missing or just back, um, but at the same time, the the jackboot has been on the neck of other competitors for so long that it's very hard to see any of them rise up at this stage. Well, the fixture makers anyway are certainly helping the most, uh, Mikey, because whoever wins between Wexford and Offaly are playing them six days later, so it's a fairly <laughs> short, it's a fairly short turnaround. Uh, we've a deep that. squad, we'll be grand. <laughs> <laughs> no, again, it, it brings up that scheduling thing, but look, I, I think, of course, Kildare, Kildare in particular, you know, they had quite a strong league. They, they probably were disappointed with their performances in one or two of the games, but, um, you know, they played quite well against Kerry. They, they played quite well 
Um, obviously against Monaghan, they put in a massive performance that day. Um, played quite well against Dublin, could have beaten Tyrone. You know, they, they, they had a decent league, so they will be fancying their chances. The only thing with all this is that for Kildare, they're more than likely going to be playing Laos, who'll probably beat Carlo. So Kildare coming up against Laos, that's a very tricky, tough mm. game for them. Yeah. And the way that Loud play and everything, they could make it very sticky for them. But I do expect Kildare to be there at the latter end of the Leinster Championship. Whether they can beat Dublin probably depends on Dublin. That if Dublin get back to towards where we all expect them to get to really, I, I think they will for the Championship. They will again be very hard to beat uh, for the rest of the year, not just for the Leinster Championship. But if there is inconsistent and unrecognisable as they were for a lot of the, the league. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Akilera and Meek can take them out, but um, I'm expecting them to, to be a different Dublin come championship. Yeah. Maliki, what do you think? Are rumours of Dublin's demise an exaggeration at this stage? Oh, no, because like, well, what, what demise are we talking about? We're talking about them them dropping down from being the nailed on uh, accepted All Ireland winner to being just one of the main contenders. So I don't think that's an exaggeration at all. Like I think that's that's who they are. Um, In the context of the Leinster Championship, are they still nailed on champions? I think they probably are, aren't they? Like, um, but like you gotta again, you gotta you've gotta work, remember where they're where 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 the fall has been from i i think i did every one of those bloody leinster finals that they won by <laughs> by 10 15 20 that's your points. overriding memory of the <laughs> gaa championship overriding. right there exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so like like jesus i remember doing one of them the the the, the 2021 the week the the sunday that the bloody masters was 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 playing out <laughs> and trying to keep track of dustin johnson while noting down the latest dean rock for like you know it's it's just so dull like but he they are um they are there to be shot at now in a way that like it, it, if nothing else whether they're as good as they are or as bad as they are it is almost immaterial for the rest of the competition now they're a team that you're not totally beaten before you go out hmm. the, the sort of the mindset has has changed for a few of the teams look mikey i was there at the wexford game last year uh, and West gave them their absolute fill of it uh, in a way that you were looking at them going, why has nobody done this before? Like Now, it, it, they were helped in the fact that Dublin were so pedestrian and so slow and so lateral and, you know, seemed to have no plan beyond this eternal keep ball, um, which they clearly tried to move away from in the league, I thought. I, 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 for all, all the things that went wrong for them in the league, I think there was a notable change in how they are trying to play. I think they are kicking an awful lot more. I think they are trying to play it quicker into the full forward line. I think they were unlucky a bit with injuries through the league in that, you know, had Cormac Costello even, and, and like, I'm not sure Cormac Costello is, is, is really of the top, top, top standard, but as a league footballer, he's a dangerous inside forward. And if he hadn't got injured, sort of halfway through the, the RMA game and had been around for the bulk of the rest of the league, I think they would have had a bit more zip and danger in there and a bit more ball winning capability. And things could have looked a little different for them. Um, I think they are sort of a good cut above everything in Leinster, but I think if they're in a Leinster final against Kildare, Glenn Ryan will have Kildare bursting out of the dressing room and they will, whether whether they are right to believe this or not, they will go out onto the pitch believing that there is a result there. And mm. that is a sea change from what we have experienced for the last 15 years. So whether they whether it actually plays out that way or not is a different story. But like that is what's different about this Leinster Championship. Yeah. We, and that, of course, it could be a Leinster semi final as well, Rory, because that, yeah. uh, the, the mystery of the draw. They, they, I wonder how long they'll have to, uh, how far do Dublin have to fall before the Leinster Championship goes back to being, you know, <laughs> a complete draw in yeah. March or, or, or the, the, the previous October or whenever yeah. they want to do it? Yeah. yeah. They, they don't have to fall too much further, uh, but they won't fall. I mean, look, their level will be where they are now and then they'll hit peaks and troughs the same as everybody else 
they were just really lucky over the course of 10 years. They had a really great bunch all come together at once, but led chiefly. And I think the descent from their lofty position, I think is no coincidence that it has coincided pretty much with the, with the, um, with the exit stage left by the goalkeeper. Um, and I'm not, it's not necessarily. I thought you were going to say Jim Gavin. <laughs> it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily. Well, look, obviously he, that, that there, there's that influence as well, but look, their, their success had begun before Jim Gavin was there. And like, I think his influence, Clarkson's influence, see, Clarkson disappeared and there's no talk about it because, because of the nature of the way that he went. And I think it, it was just, he's here today he's gone tomorrow and that was kind of it um and i think his influence not just in terms of general play in terms of you know how they set up how they restart the ball i just think his influence across the board inside in that dressing room from a leadership perspective in terms of standards in terms of you know understanding the responsibilities that go with playing with that jersey on i think he kind of probably had that i mean the captain for however many long is he the record holder to go up the Hogan step the Hogan's mm-hmm. the, st- the steps of the Hogan stand to collect Sam Maguire there was just a whole myriad of things that he brought to the table and I think when he left I think it just created this small bit of a gap that was so vast and big it's a difficult one for um, Evan Comerford or Michael Sheel or whoever they've you know l- looking to try and fill that with and that's not going to happen uh, today or tomorrow and that'll take time uh, but but I do think there is there is a there is a parallel there of some sorts but I, it could be an interesting Leicester Championship I mean there will be plenty of good games and we should we might get a couple of good semi-finals but ultimately Dublin will win yeah I was about to say I'm predicting Dublin I'm not going to try and be contrary here is everybody saying Dublin are going to win the Leicester Championship yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Eamon's nodding for those yeah, of you listening, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let the record show. Eamon Fitzmaurice yeah. is nodding that Dublin are going to win the show. Okay, let's we'll, we'll wrap up now. This is this has gone on longer than I thought it would, but sure isn't it great? We have a championship to talk about. We will yeah. just finish in a word. Who's going to win the All Ireland? Eamon, Kerry, mm. Rory, yeah, Kerry. It's Kerry, like Kerry need to win this All Ireland, and yeah. I think they will. Maliki, Mayo. Oh, now look who's been funny. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm going to go for Galway I'm going to be ridiculous again I'm going to say Galway Paul Conroy is going to win the All-Ireland um, Right <laughs> Who's going to win the Talton Cup lads? Wexford Okay <laughs> Rory uh, I'm going to I'm going to go for a resurrection in down Eamon Ooh. Mm. Um, Kevin Right there I you go forget, yeah. Cavan could end up in the Ulster final, lads. You know, <laughs> you just don't no. know what Cavan is. No, 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 down, no. Rory. No. So good. Yeah, no. <laughs> right. More expert analysis uh, from our guests and stupid predictions from me throughout the summer on the podcast. Uh, Thirty-five matches live on RT Television between Joe McDonough Cup, Charlton Cup, Senior All Irelands. Uh, exclusive radio commentary on Radio 1 on Saturday and Sunday Sport exclusive national radio commentary and your Phil Alive blogs, reports reaction, analysis, columns uh, everything else on the RT Sport website and the RT News app um, we start with hurling this weekend and also on the player you'll have New York v Sligo so you can enjoy all that uh, just to say thank you to Eamon and to Maliki and to Rory and we'll catch you all hurling fans tomorrow for a hurling preview otherwise we'll chat to you on Monday for a review of the first weekend good luck by winning the last two matches on the road and that's not going to be taken away from us. What I love in Hurling, I love players that will never give in. He hits it, he hits it, it's over the bar!